Hi guys, I am now 140 days sober. Uh, so I thought I'd do uh, this second video on a few points that I wanted to cover. Um, the first one that I wanted to cover is about when you're sober and you have friends that you associate drink with, how the dynamic changes moving forward um, when you're no longer drinking. So I had a lot of friends. I had friends that I associate drinking with, friends that I associate golf with, football, loads of different things. But the drinking friends, it always worried me that once I went sober, I was going to lose a lot of friendships. And that's a hard thing to kind of take in because I was friends with some people for years and years and years. And every time I was with them, I was drinking. So I was like, how on earth am I going to be able to do this without it? The, the truth of it is, if they're real friends, obviously, then you'll be able to find a balance. And I was very fortunate that my friends around me were so supportive of the fact. So they actually went out of their way to do things differently. So like one of my best friends, Lionel, he took up golf um, because it was something that I was doing. And he realised it was something we could do when we were sober. So that is what real friends do. I also became a lot closer to the friends that I didn't associate drinking with. Because if I had a plan to go out with a friend, say, for a meal, I'd say, yeah, 100% I'm all over it. I'll be up for that. Um, if an option came along that involved getting pissed, I'd choose that over the original plan. I was renowned for cancelling plans. I was so bad for it. It's one of my worst traits. And one of my biggest regrets was letting down people in the past that had good intentions and wanted to have fun with me that didn't involve drink. Then as soon as a plan came up, do you want to go pub? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Like, it wasn't even like I had plans. I just dropped them because I'd much rather be out drinking. So on that note, for anyone who's worried about that, if they are real friends, they will accommodate your new lifestyle. If they're not, then they're not that much of a miss and they weren't your real friends in, in the, uh, to begin with. So I don't, I don't feel that you need to worry too much about that because I did overthink that for years. And I probably put off being sober for a lot longer because I was worried about losing certain friends because they drank with me. So that was the first point. The second point I wanted to bring up, uh, which might be specific to me, but I've heard from a few people that have gone sober that they have this as well, is dreams. So uh, it sounds very specific, but my dreams recently have been completely different than they were when I was drinking. I didn't dream much because I was always either on a mad one, and then obviously when you sleep, you just pass out and don't think anything. Or the hangover days, I was so tired that I just slept in a deep sleep to kind of be catching up. Now I seem to have these like really in-depth dreams and they seem to be very um, specific to me and they're very hard for me. Uh, I've had on numerous occasions now dreams that feels like an alternative reality of what my life would have been had I not stopped drinking. So the one that I've had that's reoccurring is my missus has left me. Um, she's taken my son and everyone everyone's on her side everyone all of my closest friends and family are all telling me you bought this on yourself and she won't let me see my son anymore and i'm devastated because i'm like i'm not a bad person so i don't feel that's fair regardless of my issues like why would she do this to me and it's as if it's as if my mind's playing tricks on me i feel that it's showing me this is what you could have won like in the worst possible way and I also feel like it's my way of saying, like, my, it sounds weird. I feel like it's also me patting myself on the back. Because when I wake up, and I, that's not real, and I wake up and there's my missus asleep next to me, and I know my son's in his room, it's like, oh, thank God. Like, thank God that wasn't real. And it makes me appreciate what I, where I am now a hundred times more, which is my mind's weird way of, like, playing tricks on me. But... It's something that I struggle with, like it's happened a few times recently and it does catch me off guard. So if anyone else has struggles with dreams, like drop in the comments or drop me a message because it'd be interesting to know. I know I'm not the only one because a good friend of mine, I know he has the same problem and his are very much on par with mine with the same sort of thing where his partner's left him and things have gone to part as such. Um, sorry about the squeaky chair by the way, that's the chair I promise. <laughs> um, and the third one, the final one that I wanted to talk about um, is so good that i forgot it <laughs> the third one is ah my inability to take compliments now well, not inability but my struggle with it so this is something that i don't know again if it's specific to me or if anyone else struggles with but my whole life when people spoke about me 
it was always backhanded compliments. And if it wasn't backhanded compliments, it was like diggy and derogatory, but in a funny way. Like, oh, he's a liability, he's a loose cannon, he's a piss taker, he's this, oh, you know what he's like. It was always that. And I'd always hear people saying to my partner, like, they'd always say to my missus, and I'd hear it all the time, and I struggled with it, actually, like looking back at it, where people would say, how'd you deal with him, eh? God, you deserve a medal. And I'd be like, I'm stood right here. Like, I'm stood right here. Or, oh, he's punching. Like, you're essentially saying that you fancy my missus and you think that I'm bang average, like, to my face. And you say it in, like, a way that is seen as banter. And it is banter. Like, I've said it myself to other people. But my problem was that I was in such a bad place. I just believed it. It's so true. I, she, I was punching. Um, how does she deal with me? They didn't know the half of it. They meant that in this piss takey way. They didn't realise that she was dealing with so much. And I felt for her in that sense, because how do you deal with him was a very layered dig of me and at her, pretty much saying, like, what are you doing with him? The problem I've got now is I got used to that. I've got used to the digs. I've got used to the derogatory comments. And I felt that was just how I was. And I just took it on the chin. It was uh, water off a duck's bollocks for me. Like, it was fine. The problem I have now is now that everything is going well and I'm doing so well and, I'm, I, and I feel that people are now giving me so many compliments i'm just so unused to it people are stopping me what i haven't seen for a long time and whether it be a gig that i went to a couple of weeks ago or now that i'm back at hair masters which is where i'm filming this now i'm back here people are coming up to me going oh my god you're doing so well you look great and i'm like oh thanks like i don't know how to deal with that because i've never been complimented this much and it's great obviously it's fantastic and i don't want it to stop like it's a great ego boost and a great pat on the back that I need for me to carry on. But it is a massive dynamic twist to my life from being the liability, the fuck up, the problem, to now being like inspirational to some people because I was such a mess. And I use that very loosely, inspirational. I don't think I'm an inspiration, but I feel people have said what you're doing is inspirational and I love seeing you doing well. It's just a lot to take. And I went to a gig, um, my friend's band, Naked Next Door, went to their gig last week, and everyone was like, oh my God, mate, you look amazing, because they'd not seen me in four or five months. And it was a lot, like, it was a lot to take in, and I really, I loved it, but when I got home, I had a moment to myself, and I actually cried a little bit, and the missus was like, are you okay? I said, it's just so out of character for me to hear these compliments about myself. I was so used to not being in a good place that that was just my life. And I felt I was going to be there forever. And to now not be, it's just a massive, massive dynamic switch. And it takes a lot to get used to. Don't stop complimenting me, by, by the way. This is not me saying stop it. I love it. Like It keeps me going. But it's just different. So um, the re there were the three points I wanted to touch on. And I just wanted to say to anyone, anyone else that's going sober or is sober or wants to go sober, these are things that you're going to come across. I'm four and a half months in, half, four and a half months in now. And some of these have only just started. I thought once I got past two months, I've cracked it. I'm done. Nothing's going to touch me. I feel fine now. The differences now are not what I expected, like the dreams changing and my inability to accept that I'm doing well and I'm good now. And I'm seeing the changes in myself. I look better. I feel healthier. I'm, I'm gymming all the time now. I just like, it's a lot to take because I spent 15 years in this rut and now suddenly I've spent five months out of it and I don't know what to do. <laughs> like, what's the next move? Because I'm now just constantly progressing and everything is infinitely better. I'm loving the ice baths, I'm loving the gym, I'm loving being sober, I'm loving being back at work. I've come back to hairmasters who have given me another chance after two and a half years away when they could have quite easily and probably should have wiped their hands of me years ago and they did, rightfully so, and I left. The fact that I'm back shows that people are seeing what I'm doing and giving me the props that I know I deserve because this was huge for me. But I didn't have to. I know I deserve it, but I didn't have to. And I'm so appreciative of everyone around me that's um, stuck by me and given me the um, ego boost and the pats on the back when I need it because they do keep me going. So, so yeah, that's the end of this video. Hopefully people took something from it. Um, any questions, again, please drop me a message. Uh, I just want to help anyone that I can with this because it was, um, it's been hard for me. It has been hard. And I haven't taken this easily. I haven't taken it laying down. 
And if anyone is remotely feeling how I felt and struggles the way that I struggled, believe me, there's a way around it. Like, my life is infinitely better. Like, I say it on every video because it just is. I never thought I'd be here and I am now. And I'm not saying I've cracked it, but I feel there is nothing that will make me go back now. Life is too good. Life is too good. So yeah, thank you very much. Cheers.